Have you ever seen an actor that was just on stage waiting for their cue to be able to say their line in the way that they rehearsed it, the way that they felt their character would feel, and the way they felt their character should say it? Waiting for their moment, saying their line, waiting for the next moment. That's not real. That's not truthful, right? That's acting. The Meisner technique is an approach to acting developed by actor and acting teacher Sanford Meisner. He noticed that actors were self-conscious on stage, too in their head. He thought that when you're in your head, you can't be present, available, and in the moment. And he wanted to find a way to fix this. A truly believable scene happens when an actor really listens to their partner and reacts truthfully to the moment that just happened. So, can that be taught? Meisner certainly thought so. Many acting classes start with scene study. You get your script, you study who your character is, what their motivations are, maybe what their history is, how they react to other people. But Meisner thought that we needed to get even more basic than that when starting to learn acting. For example, if you're going to play a basketball game, you can't just go on the court and start playing with no experience. You have to learn how to dribble and pass and then shoot. And then you can start playing basketball. Meisner was a musician, a pianist. If you want to become a concert pianist, you can't start by going out there and plucking on the keys and putting a, a score in front of you to play it. You have to start with scales. Then, even once you become that famous concert pianist, you have to practice those scales. Even once you become a baller, you still got to practice dribbling and passing and shooting, right? the same with acting. So, what is this exercise? Meisner came up with something called the repetition exercise. It was a way to get actors out of their head and fully focused on their partner. They would become attuned to their emotions, so their own responses would be truthful. This exercise, or repetition game, is about reading behavior listening to your partner to allow them to influence your own behavior. So, I'm going to bring on my students, Alyssa and Morgan, and they're going to show us how it's done. All right, guys, so you can't anticipate one another's words or reactions, right? This is going to be a ping-pong game of impulses. As soon as you hear someone say something, you repeat it, and back and forth, right? Do not act. We're simply observing and immediately responding. All right? So um, we're going to have you start, Morgan. So I'm going to have you close your eyes. And when I tell you to open them, you're going to tell me the very first thing that you notice about Alyssa. Go. Eyebrows. 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 <laughs> All right, that was great. <laughs> so there was some behavior coming out of that, right? It was such a simple word. All you were saying was eyebrows and repeating it back and forth to each other. But at one point, something that she did made you act genuinely. It made you smile. And then that smile made her smile, right? So these are genuine uh, reactions that you're having to each other, which is great. All right, so it's going to be your turn next, Alyssa. So if you'll close your eyes when I tell you to open them, you're going to tell me the very first thing, physical thing, that you notice about Morgan. All right, go. You have white shoes. I have white shoes. 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 All right, so what was the behavior that you saw on her just then? There was a moment. She was telling me what I had. I'm not really sure what it was, but I was like, okay, yeah. So but you did see that there was a, a slight change in behavior, right? Yes. That that's just coming off of the energy. Okay, great. Let's do it one more time. So mm -hmm. do you, uh, you started last time, right? So, all right, go ahead, Morgan, close your eyes. All right, open them. Forehead. 
Forehead. You have a forehead. I have a 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 forehead. You have a forehead. I I have a forehead. You have a forehead. Alright, let's stop. What was her behavior just then? It was almost like she was calling me out. I was feeling a little I do have a forehead. Thank you. Well, so that was it at the very beginning, but just now. Do you think that that was consistent throughout the whole time, or has it changed? It changed a little. In the beginning, it was just her pointing something out about me. Mm-hmm. But the more we talked about it, I was more self-conscious that, yes, I do have a forehead. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I saw you. I was like, oh, no. So the point of this is hopefully that we're going to be not self-conscious, right? Because yes. we are only focusing on the other person. It doesn't become about us anymore. It's not about what my forehead looks like or even the fact that I have a forehead. It's about the other person's behavior, the way that they say those words. The words are meaningless. It's based on the behavior of the other person. But I did notice, I let you guys go a little bit longer for that Mm -hmm. one, um, because there was an ebb and a flow of behavior. You guys were going back and forth on each other, and you were influencing the way that each other felt and acted. Um, So that was a great job. All right, so this time, if you do feel an impulse to say something different, to call out their behavior and to point out um, what you think that they are feeling, what you're getting from them, then go ahead and do that, all right? And, and we'll let our impulses guide us, all right, by reading off of each other. All right, go ahead and close your eyes. All right, open them. You have a pretty face. I have a pretty face? You have a pretty face. I have a pretty face. You have a pretty face. I have a pretty face. You have a pretty face. I have a pretty face. You have a pretty face. I have a pretty face. You have a pretty face. You are happy. You are happy. You are happy. You're happy. I'm happy. You're happy. I'm happy. You're happy. I'm confused. I'm confused. (laughs) You're confused? Yes, I'm confused. There again, cool. Again, we need to make sure that we are entirely focused on the other person. So I notice a lot of times you would switch it when someone would say, I'm confused, you would also say, I'm confused, right? So instead it's your job to always talk about the other person. All right, now it's Morgan's turn again. So we're gonna start with the physical thing. Work off of one another. Don't hesitate. Don't think. Just say the first thing. You're going to say the first thing you notice about her. She's going to repeat it. If you notice that her behavior changes, you're going to point out her behavior. If you notice that her behavior changes, you're going to point out her behavior or her emotions, whatever she's feeling, right? Keep focused on the other person. Go ahead. You have shoulders. I have shoulders. 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 You have shoulders. You're accusing me. 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 You're confused. You're confused. You're confused. Right, so there was a shift in behavior, so then that would be another moment to to call off of it, right? Great job, you guys. All right, thank you you. so, so much for your help today. Thank you. Great, thanks so much. As partners continue in the Meisner course and practice this repetition exercise, They will grow better at reading one another's behavior. Instead of saying, white shirt, white shirt, black shirt, black shirt, they might start to say, you are bored. You are amused. You are frustrated. That's great. The important thing is to stay focused on your partner so that you react to them naturally. By focusing on the other person, it means that you're not focusing on yourself, which means you're not self-conscious right? Your behavior isn't forced or put on or fake. It's genuine. You're following organic instincts as provoked by another person in that moment. You are living truthfully. Meisner called acting behaving truthfully under imaginary circumstances. Behaving truthfully under imaginary circumstances. You have to learn that first part, to behave truthfully, before you can get to the imaginary circumstances of a play. Now, the Meisner technique is much more than just this repetition exercise. It's a series of exercises that build on one another and get more and more difficult and in-depth. There are two other components to the Meisner technique besides repetition, and that's emotional preparation and improvisation. But the Meisner technique program 
lasts two years, and we do not have that kind of time tonight. Chances are you aren't even looking to be a professional actor anyway, whether you're here tonight or you're watching on YouTube later. So why is this important to you? Why do I want you to practice this repetition exercise, even if you're not an actor? Here at Barton College, our freshmen all go through a class called First Year Seminar. In this, one of the things that they learn about is emotional intelligence. What is that? It's one of the definitions by Reuven Baron, a psychologist, is that emotional intelligence is an array of interrelated emotional and social competencies, skills, and behaviors that determine how well we understand and express ourselves, understand others, and relate with them, cope with daily demands, challenges, and pressures. Here at Barton, we find that emotional intelligence is extremely important to developing mature, well-rounded, socially aware, and emotionally available students. Students that behave intelligently. But EI can't just be learned by reading about it or knowing what it is. It has to be practiced, just like basketball or piano or acting. So what do these two things have in common? Where does Meisner fit into EI? Well, Baron divided emotional intelligence into five realms or clusters of skills and behaviors. Each cluster has three factors, making 15 of them total. The five clusters, or the five realms, are one, the ability to understand emotions as well as express our feelings and ourselves. Two, the ability to understand other people's emotions and relate with them on a personal level. Three, the ability to manage and control our emotions so they work for us and not against us. Four, the ability to manage, change, and solve problems of an intrapersonal nature and interpersonal nature. Five, the ability to generate a positive mood and be self-motivated. Any of those sound familiar to what we've learned tonight? Let's take a look at those first two again. They are essential to being a great actor. They are also essential parts of leading a happy, successful life. And having great relationships with your family, yourself, your peers and colleagues, your bosses, and employees. So that first one, the self-perception realm, is the ability to understand emotions as well as to express our feelings and ourselves. Number two was the interpersonal realm, the ability to understand other people's feelings and to relate with people. So important to acting. The great news is you can use the repetition exercise to practice and grow in these areas. Some of the skills that the Meisner technique enhances, listening, truly listening, not just hearing. Identifying emotions in others, what we call in the acting world reading behavior. Self-regard, thinking about yourself less and becoming less self-conscious or self-involved because you're focused on that other person. Empathy, because you are attuned to the emotions and the desires of others, and you're open enough to allow their emotions to affect you. This exercise can also help with connection, connecting with people on a deeper level than just the surface. Self-expression, being open to whatever your partner is making you feel and letting it show through your behavior. Focus, because the objective is to focus intently on your partner and repeat exactly what the other person says, fumbles and all, if they stutter, you stutter. It gives us a point on which to focus and a way to practice honing in and holding that focus. It also fosters truthfulness and spontaneity because we're living moment to moment. 
When I was in college, my acting classes focused on this Meisner technique. And practicing these exercises opened up a whole new world for me. I started reading everyone's emotions all of the time. Truth be told, my girlfriend got a little annoyed with me, always repeating back to her the way that she felt. But it really helped me understand people better. If someone did something to upset me, instead of allowing myself to immediately get triggered and defensive and yell back at them, I now had the ability to think, what are they thinking? What are they feeling right now? And then I can allow that to determine my behavior. So in conclusion, I really hope that you all will practice this exercise with a friend or a roommate or a, a partner to get in touch with your own ability to read other people's emotions and to let go of your own self-consciousness, right? Stop thinking about ourselves so much and put the emphasis on other people. What are they going through? What are they thinking right now? And how am I going to be open enough to allow that to affect me? Thank you.